Good evening, guys. Sorabo here. Um, recently, I went down to PPG um, after a small break. Uh, I've been dealing with work and school and all that. Um, so uh, with exams coming up, I probably should be focusing, but I decided to take a break from all that to head out there and uh, play the game. And I ended up doing really well. I performed in their uh, half case tournament for Ghost of the pa uh, Ghost from the Past. And um, I actually took first place in the event um, using this deck, uh, old reliable for me anyway. <laughs> um, it was a really good experience. Uh, some really interesting matchups. Uh, some meta, me some meta relevant things, but there was a good world representation, and I pretty much enjoyed the entire event. Uh, so, anyways, let's get into the list. Um, three chamber dragon maid, three parlor. Nothing to talk about here. If you've been watching my content, you know that these two are your bread and butter starters. Um, alongside Black Metal Dragon, they get your engine set up. Uh, so there's, there's not much to say here. One lower par, we're in earnest. Again, I don't think you need any more than these. Um, the big dragons are inherently a, bri a brick. So playing too many is never a good idea. And like we already have so many in the deck. But we try and like we try and work around that by having them be good cards right and like lore par is a go second card kind of like a hand trap Ernest is like a weird extender um and then obviously red md is an actual extender so it's all good uh tempest i chose to play tempest and no gold sark because in testing i found that if you ever used gold sark to banish tempest ahead of time not having it for fusion trishula down here actually messes up that combo strength you need to be able to search Tempest there so that you can use the Dragon Mage you have in your hand and um, lore par that you would search there to make show and then you use Fusion Trishula and Romulus to make spheres. So I ended up coding, cutting Gold Sark. I, I mean, I guess you could still play it. There's some use for being able to search like a lore par going second, but I found the deck was just fine without it. Um, three copies of Noctivision Dragon. I'm really leaning towards two with this guy he's really strong but because i play prosperity and i feel prosperity is like the better card just because it lets me see like the best cards more often even if nocto has that plus one effect um playing three the card's kind of bricky and like if you draw too many you can't do anything with them or if at least prosperity kind of like fixes your hand by giving you what your top three best cards. Docto doesn't really do that if you draw too many. So I think two might be where I go from here. I don't know if I'd play three anymore. Um, but it was still a good card. Moving on to uh, the hand traps. I played three Ash, three Diddy Crow. I only played six. I think the format is, it's, it's, it's explosive, but it's nowhere near as do or die combo heavy as it was like a couple formats ago. So you can afford to play six hand traps and then like a really good answer to a board and like Dark Ruler no more. Or preferably Droplet, but money's tight. <laughs> uh, two, two Hospitality, one Changeover. I don't think you need three of this card. I think two is perfectly fine if you manage your resources properly. Um, most of your, revo your Reborn and your Revive should come from optimizing your use of Spheres, show house and nurse and these cards should be like that that little push that you need to win the game hospitality and tidying respectively so you don't really want to burn through them recklessly um one changeover i don't think two is ever worth it right now i think worst case let's say it gets dd crow that's fine you just play the game with spheres and like good cards and traps like i don't I don't think it's worth playing two right now, even if you could technically like justify it. Um, one Dragon Ravine, you don't need more than one in this variant. Three copies of World Legacy Guard Dragon, it is the by far the best extender. Um, it it turns your two drag your your four dragon setup into a three dragon setup, so it, it's just a lot more flexible. So I like it. Um, one one for one. Uh, so when I side, I actually side out one black metal dragon and not the one for one. Just because the one for one is also like an extender. So when you're side decking with this deck, keep that in mind. Um, if you if you have too many normal summons, 
this card right here is essentially a better version of this in most cases because like you can black metal dragon plus chamber and parlor is full combo but if you open one for one you can send the chamber in the parlor do the black dragon black metal dragon play and just summon them from the graveyard like it's the same thing you just you just don't end up with two normal summons so um pot of prosperity this card is actually just upstart with plus uh, you, you look at the top three cards, you only ever banish three in this deck. I've never banished six and I never will. Um, only three. And you look at the top three cards, you pick the best card for the given situation. Usually it's World Legacy Guard Dragon if you can top it, or like a Black Metal Dragon if you open one of these. Um, even, sometimes even hard ripping a Tidying is good because if you send a Tidying for Dragon Ravine off Chamber, you still have one to set. So like even opening two copies of this card is, isn't terrible because then you can use it for its actual set um, effect. Uh, three copies of Dark Ruler No More. I wish this was Droplet, but Dark Ruler No More is all I could afford um, at this current time. Maybe I'll get Droplet at some point, but not at the moment. It, Dark Ruler is still fine. And like Dark Ruler has a lot of a few applications in the metagame that Droplet doesn't. Like, the reason I, I actually think Dark Ruler is a little, little bit nicer against Dragon Link is if your opponent has, like, a setup, a setup of Spheres, Hot Red Dragon Arch being Abyss, and, like, a Tidying. I know it's a super specific setup, but it could happen, right? Um, if you use Droplet and you discard, they can chain the Tidying, bounce the cards you discarded back to your hand for Droplet, and then chain Red and, uh, not Hot Red Dragon Arch being Abyss to the Tidying, and negate the Dark Ruler no more. Not Dark Ruler No More, the Droplet. With Dark Ruler No More, they can't do that unless you played a Hand Trap prior, previously. Like an Ash Blossom or a DD Crow on their on their last turn. So Dark Ruler, I think, is a lot easier to blank boards with. Just specifically for that one interaction. Aside from that, Droplet is pretty much just better. And then 3 Tidying. Tidying is the best, I personally, I think it's like the best trap card in the format right now. Next to like Shadal Schism. Um, it's quite insane. And I'm happy it actually belongs with us, because I'm going to be abusing this card pretty much for the rest of my Yu-Gi-Oh career, right? Um, this is going to be my deck forever. <laughs> I'll play other things, but I have no reason to drop this. And as dragons get better, this deck only gets better too. And it's nice to have a card like this, Chamber, Parlor, Nurse, um, in, your, in your corner, Hospitality. Uh, one thing I should say about Nurse, uh, she's not like a really good normal summon, but she's really good for turning all your plus ones or your plus twos into plus twos and plus threes. She's just that extra bit of card advantage that could come up, so I like having her. I, f I try to summon her as often as I can, um, just because she's good, you know? Uh, in the side, I played three copies of Paleozoic Dynamiscus. This card is pretty popular in OCG builds of Dragon Maid and like with Eldritch and Pankids and like certain points during the uh, Dragon Link combo. I felt it was really good to have this uh, quick effect banish. Uh, not quick effect, this trap card banish. Well, I guess it is a quick effect. This is trap. I'm stupid. Um, this quick effect banish to like remove the threats before they can get started like against Prank Kids and Zoo this kind of just ends their turn or like forces them to have the follow up engine. Which is where exactly where we want to be. Um, so I think it's cool. I would have played Imduck if I had it. I would easily cut a Striker Dragon for an Imduck here. But I didn't have one. So I think Dynamiscus was cool. Would I play it again? I don't know. Definitely not in the Dragoonity variant. But in this variant where you have a lot of space to work with. Maybe. Just depends on the format. Um, Red Reboot. Lightning Storm, Harpy's Feather Duster, Harpy's Feather Duster. If you're playing a combo deck, you should be playing at least one of these. Up to you if you want to play three Lightning Storm. I think at least one of each is mandatory. And then I think a quick play Spell and Trap card removal in the side deck is good for Chanel Schism. I chose Twin Twister because I don't care about the discard. And sometimes, like, like for example, if I open Black Metal Dragon and Chamber or I have like Tidying, the discard is completely irrelevant. So... I prefer to take out two cards than play something like Cosmic Cyclone because my ceiling is high enough that typically I can like kill the opponent just from resolving this card. Um, one Koakimero Drago. This card's a win condition against a lot of decks in the format right now. If you summon this off of Spheres against Dragon Link um, 
and they have a defense position like like for example they normal summon a safer and you bounce it and summon this you kind of just like win right because like quick launch they their only way you can they can stop you is if they have quick launch and then they could uh no quick launch wouldn't even work because there are no non-dark like it, it's just a win condition in its of itself um it stops all lighter dark monsters from being special summoned so it's really good in the dragon link matchup it's really really good in the eldritch matchup this card turns off every single eldritch card like all of them the only way they out it is with eldritch's hand effect so i decided to uh use this in my final match which was zombie like against zombie eldritch and when i summoned this in game three i just won from there they couldn't play out of it um whereas you can easily use your like lore par Aranus, and like red md or tempest and just run your opponent over which is big number hit hard so it's a really good card and you can easily turn it off with cards like tidying and fusion summoning it with house dragon mate so you don't even care too much about it um three copies of lancia really good against the dino that i didn't play um it's good for lowering the ceiling of dragon link but it doesn't necessarily guarantee you a win so and that's the same thing for the next hand trap, Nibiru. Uh, this card didn't really perform too well at all today. I didn't resolve it once. I didn't draw it. Um, I think it's... I think conceivably speaking, it's a good card to have in the matchup because it lowers their ceiling. But I almost feel like maybe this should have been Droll and Lockbird instead. But, I, I mean, maybe I'm overthinking it. Um, in the extra deck... Two striker dragon uh, i just chose to play two because why not but realistically speaking this could you only need one and the last card could be like anything could have been a nightmare cerberus um imduk if you want to play dynamiscus also works um two guard dragon package lp pisty you normal I don't, I don't need to talk about that spheres literally the best dragon card like in the extra deck this card's actually busted. I think Spheres is an infinitely better card than LP, right? Like, a lot of people want to see LP banned, but I feel like this card's stupider. Because the potential, the potential to plus off of this card is easier than it is with LP, and it's greater than LP, right? Because, like, from a pure card advantage standpoint, in order to resolve LP's effect, you need, a, uh, you need four dragons, right? Three if you have World Legacy Guard Dragon. So, because you need two arrows... Um, so you need like a Halkafibrax, a Romulus, or Spheres. Um, and then you need another dragon to make LP. And then if you don't have World Legacy Guard Dragon, you need another dragon to make like Striker Dragon or Pisty, depending on how you're building it. But with Spheres, you get the same utility as LP, even if it's slower, but you get the benefit of it is a lot higher, right? Because just from a pure card advantage uh, standpoint, with spheres if you tribute it and you bounce let's say your opponent has a link monster on the field right your spheres will replace itself with chamber dragon made and your opponent lost a card so let's say it was a link two you're even in card advantage because you you still have the you still get the dragon that you tributed for spheres but you went plus one because your opponent lost two resources because they sent two cards to the graveyard to make a link monster right even better if it's something like a fusion that requires three cards in most cases but then it doesn't stop there right you could summon nurse dragon maid and then revive a chamber and then chamber searches a tidying and then that plus one because of plus two and then plus three and then if you enter the battle phase plus four like so on so forth um so the, the potential for this card to get out of hand is a lot higher than something like LP, and its investment is a lot lower. So I think it's a really incredibly powerful card, and probably the best Dragon Extra Deck card in the game right now. Um, LP's good too. Not not downplaying him, but I think Spears is a way better card. If I had if I if I had one of these in my Extra Deck and no other card, I would take Spears every day just because it does more for less. Um. Romulus, it just searches Dragon V. Um, not much to say. I did use its second effect today on Tempest to special summon it. Just read your cards. You know, a lot of people actually don't know that Romulus has a second effect. So when I dropped Fusion Trishula on them, they were like, "What? How?" Uh, <laughs> Banishing Tempest. It's it's kind of funny. 
But yeah, drawing Tempest isn't too bad as long as you can still combo out of it. Um, Twin Triangle Dragon, it's good for setting up OTKs. I like it. It combos really nicely with Noctivision Dragon and the two Nightmares to get draws and pop cards. Um, Phoenix, Unicorn, I don't need to say anything about them. Axis Code, don't need to say anything about this. Big number, hit hard, OTK machine. Um, Fusion Trishula, this card, I think if you're not playing the Dragooning any variant, you should be trying to summon this guy because he, he pretty much rips your opponent's extra deck and allows you to search a Dragon Maid being lower par or parlor whichever you need for the given moment typically it's going to be lower par because he can vanish tempest and ultimately like it, it, it allows you to use your cards a little bit more what's the better word optimally because then you can just link the spheres off for the uh, i mean link the romulus and the trishula off for spheres and then use the changeover and the dragon maid that you set up with it like bounce the parlor and the changeover back when you were guard dragon comboing to with the lore part that you just searched to make sure so your your setup is still complete and this card really fills in the holes it's banished from the top of the deck effect is like negligible 90 percent of the time but i actually sacked belt banished one of my opponents eldritch the golden lords with it today so that was kind of cool and then two house one show golden ratio i don't think you need any more than this at all it's a really good card uh, I mean combination of cards it's it's efficient you can summon a house if you need her for OTKing or for like popping and breaking boards house is pretty good at breaking boards and then show you can use as the negate that she is because this is the best this is actually the I think the best dragon fusion monster like we've had in a long time this card does a lot but it's it's also like so fair too it doesn't feel unfair because it's so difficult to summon but if this card ever became super easy to summon i could see it like ending up something in this deck would get banned either the card that enables it or this card because it does way too much um but yeah that's it for the list uh to talk about my matchups right so round one i played against uh phantom knights that matchup was a lot harder than like i i expected Mostly because that deck can play through a lot of hate. And a Spheres Bounce and a Show Negate is not enough to stop it. Uh, even if you have the Tidying set, they could still potentially just open enough extenders and push through. And it, it manage to at least make a Dragoon, right? And then Dragoon on a simplified game state is kind of a pain in the ass. So we ended up getting in a draw. Which wasn't good for my confidence going into the uh, the event you never really want to start with a draw round one but it is what it is right that's, that's where we ended up uh round two was altergeist it was pretty easy um i think i bricked game one i drew three parlor Ernest, and like dark ruler no more or something like that no dd crow it was three parlors Ernest, and dd crow and like i could not get anything started and then I just won game two and three because like Alter Guys isn't a really like it's it's a good deck, but it's not fast enough to like compete with an advantage engine like this one once it's going. Even something as simple as summoning a parlor and like cycling tidings and chambers can really get you ahead when your opponent is burning themselves with solemn strikes and trap cards and things of the like. So I ended up winning that with a reverse sweep. Um Round three was Dragon Link. Uh, I won game one going second because I opened Lancia Ash and I was able to lower the board to a easy, uh, an easy state to break apart at that point. Um, game two, he overwhelmed me because I drew too many normal summons, which is still an issue this version of the deck has and why I think the Remus version is a little bit better because you can do a little bit more without all of it being in your normal summon um i ended up like getting blown out i think he had like three he had a three mat appaloosa borlo savage dragon and a set tiding and i i couldn't play through all of it um if i had a big dragon i could have probably forced the show but i didn't have a big dragon i had like a black metal dragon that if i normal summoned it was probably going to get bounced by the set tiding um so i wasn't going to get the search red md or special or summon the chamber or parlor in my hand so that game didn't go well but then game three i opened game three my hand was ridiculous i opened dynamiscus two lancia ash 
and chamber i did not open combo but the thing about chamber is right she sets up combo on the follow-up turn because she can search hospitality and then this tidying that you used the prior turn can uh the previous turn can be used as the extender that you need for setting up the guard dragon plays so all i did was normal chamber search tidying set tidying set dynamiscus pass my opponent couldn't play the game <laughs> I, I it was funny because I, I after that i just started comboing off and like i killed him um it was a good match though it was really entertaining round four was prank kids um this one was a 2-0 sweep only one i got today uh my opponent really didn't know the matchup and like i knew it a little bit better like i had ashes in the right place places uh when he used meow meow or he summoned meow meow and tried to use their effects um i had dark ruler no more to blank the board i lower part is stop battle butler like the, i just had a lot of good uh, enough advantage to stop him to where i was able to make an access code player and clear his board twice and then just kill him for lethal um so that's that was a pretty good matchup i think it's a winning matchup overall in our favor just because cards like spheres and like tidying immediately force them to have like some sort of fusion spell in order to deal with um getting their normal summon basically just negated um and then the last round in the finals i played against zombie eldlich uh, so zombie world is it's a powerful card and it could potentially be an auto win but if you win the die roll you typically don't have to matter it doesn't matter that much as long as you can establish some kind of like board which is really which was really easy for me to do game one i made tidying spheres and show and my opponent like he just couldn't break the board um he tried to reverse floodgate me with the rivalry um but i didn't let him have i didn't let him keep zombie word on the field so i ended up getting locked into dragons but that doesn't matter right because my whole deck is dragons and it was in response to me using nightmare phoenix on the rivalry so the rivalry got destroyed anyway and i was just i just made access code and cleaned up and it, it just kind of is what it is on that um let's see game two i bricked so hard i drew hospitality i think it was hospitality twin twister double dd curl and double um knock division dragon there was nothing playable there so that was kind of tragic but then game three i bought it back around and i made like a crazy board of show spheres um tidying and dynamiscus set <laughs> and my opponent just like by the he tried to evenly match me after using Eldritch's effect to send Show to the graveyard, but I had revived Chamber prior, so I just tagged back into Chamber, I mean Show, and negated the evenly match, and he was like, huh. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny. Um, and from there, like, I, I used Spheres on the Unizombie, put it back in his hand, and after the battle phase, I summoned Koakamiro Drago, and he just had to end his turn, because Eldritch actually hard loses to this card. And he had already used his hand effect, which was the only thing that could stop it. So, that was pretty much for, uh, it for the event. I had a good time. It was nice to do some in-person playing. I haven't done so pretty much since December. Um, I've just been so busy lately. But I'm going to try and like get back in the saddle on it. And who knows? Anyways, it, it, was, a good, it was a good time. Shout out to the PPG folk for running a really fun tight event um that's pretty much all i got to say if you want to see the event you can head over to their channel you can watch the highlight reels my matches in the finals so towards the end of the video and yeah that's it you guys have a great day good evening oh God, i messed up the end good night